Good art is the effective communication of good ideas. But where do good ideas come from, and how do they become good works of art? Well, sometimes an artist will get lucky, and a good idea will come spontaneously, and the whole process will unfold like magic. Most of the time, though, good ideas and good art come as a result of an involved, multi-layered process called the creative design process. Most creative works of art are made using this process in one form or another. It's a series of stages that a work will go through from its little rough initial concept all the way to a finished, fully realized work of art. Understanding the steps of this process can help you to generate creative ideas and carry those ideas through to compelling works of art. The process starts with analysis, then you'll move on to brainstorming for ideas, then you'll do some visual research related to those ideas, then put your research and ideas together to formulate your rough draft, then you'll fix that rough draft many, many times before moving on to a nice, neat, polished final draft. Analysis means figuring out just what kind of artwork you're going to make. What is the basic concept or the guidelines that are going to inform your ideas? If you're doing a work of art for, say, a school project, then that would mean figuring out the requirements of the project, the grading criteria, the learning objectives, as well as the materials that you have to work with so that you can ensure that you're going to get a good grade. If you're doing a work of art professionally, then that would mean listening to what the client wants to see in your artwork. So if your job as an artist is to, say, illustrate a book, analysis would come in the form of reading that book so that you know just what to illustrate. If you're making a piece of art for yourself, then analysis will be coming up with the concept for the kind of art that you're going to make. So if an artist says to themselves, I'm going to make an unusual looking chair that will be extremely comfortable, or I want to make a painting that expresses my views on the issue of war, those decisions are a form of analysis. So before deciding what that unusual looking comfortable chair is going to look like, or deciding how the views on war are going to be expressed, the basic parameters for the art are being set. This will guide your ideas and your artistic decisions going forward. Once you have the basic concept for your work figured out, it's time to come up with ideas for what that artwork is going to look like. It's time to experiment. It's time to brainstorm. Brainstorming for ideas can take many different forms, but the purpose of brainstorming is always the same to come up with as many different ideas as you can so that you can pick and choose from the best of those different ideas when moving towards your final design. This is the stage of the process where your creativity will be challenged the most. So if you're asked to come up with a good idea and you just go with the first idea that pops into your head, there may be a chance that you've come up with a good one. But when you take the time to brainstorm, you can explore alternatives and find some new ideas to enhance your original idea or give you a deeper, better vision to work with. And at the end of all of that, you still end up going with the first idea you came up with. Then you can do so knowing that it was your best idea, not your only idea. Many people think that brainstorming is just recording ideas that are already in your head, but really brainstorming is a way of coming up with ideas in the first place. Just the simple act of drawing or writing ideas down can give you more ideas to work with. This is a messy process because it's all about experimenting and trial and error, but even the ideas that you put on paper that you don't use are just as valuable as the ones that you do use. Your mistakes don't distract you on your way to good ideas, they help take you there. The best way to brainstorm is to act. Putting pencil to paper, drawing, writing, note-taking, even talking out your ideas. My personal rule of thumb is, when your pencil is moving, your brain is moving. When brainstorming, your ideas don't have to be good yet, just many. A lot of people get hung up on thinking that all of their ideas are bad. The thing is, if all you have right now are bad ideas, that's okay. Get them down on paper. Go through the process. Chances are you have good ideas in your head, you're just not used to hearing them. Bad ideas can also lead to good ideas because you can put a bad idea down on paper, see what's not working about it, and then make improvements.
One method of brainstorming for coming up with ideas is to doodle. When doodling, you just sort of let your hand do the work and see what comes out of it later. There's really no need to overthink it. Uh, this method works especially well if you're trying to come up with abstract patterns or original designs. When I'm doodling, I will just maybe think about vaguely telling my hand how I want it to move and let it do the work. I'll experiment with different shapes, different line qualities, different arrangements. Sometimes just let the process and the situation guide your mark making. And then if you come across something that you like, then you can develop that with a little more control. Sketching is a little more controlled than doodling. When I sketch, I have a rough idea of the image that I want to make already in my mind, and I will draw it loosely and lightly on a sheet of sketch paper. It's okay to be vague and messy at this point. Don't worry about sketching out fine details. Just keep things light and loose so that you can erase things and redraw them easily. Once I have something sketched out, I will identify the things that I like about the design and the things that I don't care for so much. I'll then try different variations on a design, coming up with a different approach or a different composition. I'll try alternatives to a design, changing the things that I don't like, or maybe even changing the things that I do like just to try something different. And I'll just keep doing this, experimenting with as many alternatives as I can think of and let one idea lead to another until the design that feels right just jumps out at me. Free writing and mind mapping is another method of brainstorming for artwork. Even though you're writing, you're coming up with ideas to sketch out later. When I write as part of brainstorming, I might make a list of the things that I want to communicate in my art, like what kind of emotions I want to express or what kind of statement I want to make. I'll then make a list of all the things that I can think of to put in my artwork to express those ideas. Writing will sometimes give you a starting point for doing your sketches later, like having a game plan for your sketches. If you're not sure whether your brainstorming is leading to useful ideas or not, try showing your doodles and sketches and notes to someone. Let other people give you feedback. Let them ask questions. Sometimes that can make you think of things you haven't thought of before. This is a technique called failing faster. Rather than completing a whole work of art only to find that it didn't communicate your ideas effectively, share your ideas and your approach in the beginning, and if they don't make sense to other people, then you can clarify or modify those ideas before putting in a bunch of work. I know that it's a really scary thing to share your ideas when they're all rough and raw and messy, but trust me, this is the best time to share them. When brainstorming for different ideas, try your best to let one idea lead to another. This, again, involves learning to listen to that inner voice without judgment and to write or draw the ideas that your inner voice tells you to. Does the idea you just sketched out remind you of something totally unrelated and unexpected? This is called free association. In other words, what does this thing over here remind you of? Can you somehow incorporate that unexpected thought into your ideas? The vast majority of the time, creativity is not about coming up with something totally new from scratch, but it's about taking this idea from over here and that idea from over there and combining them together to make something new. Or it's about seeing familiar things in a slightly different way. Be curious. Ask yourself, what would happen if I... and then do whatever that what if might be. Look for inspiration in unexpected places. If you're stuck for ideas, then look at things totally unrelated to what you're working on. And if you're ever at a point where you feel like you've just hit a wall with your creativity, then take breaks. Think about other things and then come back to your brainstorming later. Go for a walk. Trust me, this helps. Keep a notebook and pencil handy or the voice recorder on your phone so that if you have a good idea, then you can record it right away and then revisit it later. It's also a really good idea to work on more than one creative project at a time. So if you feel stuck with one project, then you can work on another one for a while, then switch back to that first project with more creative energy. This is called slow motion multitasking. And many artists that I know, including myself, will have several projects going on at one time. Sometimes even figuring out the time of day that your creativity is at its peak and doing your brainstorming work during that time can make a world of difference. 
Take risks, make mistakes, be prepared to be wrong, and have many unusable ideas. By the end, you will have many, many useful ones too. Now, suppose that you have some really good ideas for the artwork that you want to make, and you want to make that art as visually compelling as you can, but you don't quite know how to draw what you want to draw. Well, this is where reference images can come in to save the day. Let's say you want to draw a realistic Statue of Liberty in your artwork. Finding a photo of the Statue of Liberty and drawing what you see will give you more accurate results and you can draw the Statue of Liberty with more confidence and with less headache than if you just tried to draw it from memory. Professional artists use reference images constantly. Many will take their own reference photos, sometimes using themselves or their friends as models. When hunting for and collecting and even making reference images, it helps to have a strong idea in mind of what you want your artwork to look like so that you know which images are useful and which ones are not. That's where your sketches and brainstorm come in. Your rough ideas will help guide what images to look for. But do be open to revising or expanding on an idea if you come across an image that inspires you when you're doing your visual research. Before you begin your search, start by looking at your sketch and making a list of things you'll need images of. Now, if you just type these search terms into the search bar on Google or Bing or Pinterest, you may end up getting images that are copyright protected, meaning that they technically belong to someone else. It's not so much of an issue to use these images if you are just doing a work of art for yourself, but if you're making a work of art that you plan to sell or publish or post online one day, and especially if someone can clearly identify the reference image that you're using in your drawing or painting, you may run into legal issues when using licensed work. This is why the best course of action is to take and use as many of your own reference images as you can. Go out and take pictures. Ask your friends to pose for you. Sometimes you can get more control over things like perspective and lighting than you can with found images. And you can use them or copy from them however you want. They're your images. If finding reference images on the internet is a must, then I recommend searching on websites that specialize in free domain or Creative Commons Zero images, meaning the images are free for anyone to use however they want. Google can filter your image search by usage rights. If you're on an image search, click on tools, then usage rights, then click on labeled for reuse or labeled for reuse with modification. These images are a lot safer to use as references than images that may be licensed to somebody else. Many people create web pages with photo libraries specifically for artists to use as reference. Just make sure that you study and follow the photographer's policies on using their artwork as reference. Many such websites will allow you to buy a license for using their images. Whatever you do, the last thing you should do is just straight up copy an image that you found on the internet or in a book. Using reference images means incorporating and altering found images in order to express an original idea. Reproducing someone else's photo or artwork and passing it off as your own is called a derivative, which is pretty much stealing. So don't do that. With your reference images ready to go, you can begin combining them according to the ideas and compositions of your brainstorm sketch to make your rough draft. As you work on your rough draft, you may find that you need to go back and find more references of things you hadn't thought of the first time around. That's okay, go back and find them. Sometimes I'll even go reference hunting in the middle of my final draft. The rough draft stage is where your ideas and your references come together. This is the messiest and most time-consuming stage of the whole process. It's where you'll do all of your trial and error and experimenting, all of your rethinking, all of your drawing and erasing and redrawing and fixing and re-erasing and redrawing, making your work a little bit better each time. I usually do my rough drafts on some kind of rough draft paper, like cheap printer paper or newsprint. You want a paper that will be easy to erase from. Some higher quality papers will leave marks where you've made a mistake even after you've erased. Start by sketching and drawing lightly so that any mistakes that you make you can erase completely and they won't create a visual distraction when you're drawing. Once your light, sketchy lines feel right, you can go over them with heavier contour lines to make them more definite. Copy from your visual references in a way that falls in line with your ideas. There are several ways that you can do this. 
free hand copying is one, using the grid trach is a great one, sketch out your larger, more predominant shapes first. That way you can see what the whole composition will look like. Then you can work on fitting details into your larger shapes. How much detail you put into a rough draft is up to you. Consider the rough draft not just a place to work out ideas, but also a place to practice drawing for your final draft. Here's where you'll work out any visual issues that you might have, whether it's with shading or working out a repetitive pattern. But if you feel like you've gotten the hang of those things and you're really confident that you know what you're doing when you're drawing, then you can save a lot of that repetitive work for your final draft. If I'm ever working on a final draft and I get to a point where I need to figure out an issue with drawing, then I will go back to my rough draft and work on those ideas there. Okay, now it's time to bring the monster you've created to life. It's time to make your final draft. I will start by lightly tracing my rough draft, or in some cases, rough drafts, onto the final paper. Again, keep things really light. Lines don't erase well on higher quality paper, so try to keep your mistakes to a minimum. Take it slow if you have to. For tracing, I generally use a light box. If I find that I'm without a light box, then I will tape my rough draft and my final draft together on a window and let the natural light be my light box. Once you have a good sketch down on paper, you can go over that sketch again with your final media, whether that's pen or paint or marker or pencil if you're doing shading or making your marks more definite. Remember to take your time and to keep your paper and your work area clean. Fewer things ruin a good drawing like dirty smudges or coffee stains in the corners. If you're drawing in such a way that your hand has to pass over an area that you've already drawn on, then put a piece of fine cloth or a paper towel down between your hand and the drawing. It'll keep your drawing from smudging and it'll help keep your hands clean. Students, amateur artists, and professionals all use one form of the creative design process or another. And while we all wish that that process just had a neat and tidy flow from one step to another, it's really just a messy jumble where you jump back and forth from one stage to another. But by the end of all of that chaos, you should have a pretty well executed work of art. And keep in mind that these are just basic outlines for the process and that your particular process of coming up with and executing ideas will be unique to you.